Hey guys, Grady's mom here, and this video is going to be a series of five recipes using your crock pot um, as the predominant way to prepare the meals. Um, now, the reason I was inspired to make this video is a lot of people forget about the crock pot in the warm months, um, you know, spring and summer, and tend to gravitate towards using the crock pot in the colder months, so fall and winter. I personally like to use my crock pot all year. I particularly like to use it in the warm months because I live in the south, it's very hot, and by using the crock pot, I don't have to turn my oven on to heat up my whole house. So not only does it cook itself, um, I don't have to use that, you know, again, the oven to heat up the whole house and make it even hotter in here. So again, this is sort of the intro to this series, which is a crock pot meal series. Um, you can use any of these recipes all year round, obviously, but these are just some things to give you ideas for inspiration to create your own or maybe, you know, replicate what I am doing. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the first recipe in the series, which is a pork sauce. So just keep watching. Okay, guys, so recipe number one in this series, this probably will be the easiest of the five recipes that I'm going to share with you in this video. This is my pork sauce, and it's just my version of it. Um, I grew up eating pork sauce, which is literally just pork in sauce. Um, however, my mom made her tomato sauces and marinara sauces homemade from scratch using tomatoes that she grew. Um, I don't have the A, the time for that, and B, I'm, I found that the way I do it is delicious. Um, my mom's is obviously better because homemade is always going to be better. So if you want to go ahead and make a homemade sauce, with fresh tomatoes, that would be perfectly fine. I am taking help from the store, which I normally do. Okay guys, P.S. My son is home, it's summer, there's no school. So it's very challenging for me to film any kind of cooking video. So if there are a lot of pauses or mom brain moments, that is why I am honestly trying my best. So please bear with me and give me the benefit of the doubt here. Um, back to this recipe, we're gonna need pasta, any kind will do. I'm using penne, you can use whatever you like. Homemade sauce is always gonna be best, but jarred or canned is fine too. I'm just using Newman's marinara. You're also, and this guys is I think a 20, yeah, 24 ounce jar, standard size jar. You're gonna need a smaller can of the tomato sauce. This is, an, it is, this is an eight ounce from Aldi, any brand is fine. Some olive oil, some salt and pepper, and obviously you're gonna need your pork. I like the bone in, I find it juicier and more flavorful, um, and I find that slow cooking it makes it very tender. If you don't like the bone in, a lot of people are kind of weirded out by meat uh, with bones. You can use boneless pork loin. The rule of thumb is going to be one piece of pork per person. So my son will not eat the meat. He will eat the pasta with the sauce. So I have one piece of pork for myself and one for my husband. I had it frozen and I just thawed it out to room temperature. I am just going to fry this. Um, I'm actually going to sear it, which just means that you're partially cooking it. You're pretty much just browning the outside to seal all the juices and flavor in because it's going to cook the rest of the way in the crock pot. So I'm gonna get these babies frying up and show you guys how easy this is to put together. Okay, so in a large frying pan, um, larger, you're not going to want the meat to be all crowded, so use a large enough pan. Obviously, you have a big, if you have a huge family, you might have to do the meat in batches. You're just going to take the olive oil and just drizzle like that. And then just give this a couple minutes just to heat up because you want the pan nice and screaming hot when you put the meat in there. And then I'm just going to get my meat, bring it over here. I'm going to grab my salt and pepper. While the pan's heating up, you're going to want to do this. And you're going to want your meat at room temperature if possible. If it's a little chilly, that's fine. I'm just going to nicely salt and pepper it on side one. And then I'm going to put this side down first. So I'm going to grab a tongue. And then again, I'm just kind of letting this. You can feel it getting hot already. Because you want it to be nice and hot. So when the meat hits the pan, you know, it gets that nice crust on it. So I have my heat you know, just under high. So like very, very medium, very high. So just under high right there. So it's starting to heat up really nice. And then again, I have my meat salted and peppered. Now, a lot of people would say, why not just put the pork chops in the crock pot the way they are? 
If you did, that's fine. It wouldn't be disgusting or anything. But um, I have a culinary background, and on top of that, I just tend to do things the way my mom did them because she is an amazing cook, amazing you know household cook. So um, I find that by searing it, again, we're not going to fully cook these. We're just going to sear them, which pretty much means just browning them and getting a nice crust on them. It truly makes a difference because the meat will stay more tender, and the main thing is it's going to have a lot more flavor. So this feels ready. I'm going to go ahead, guys, with my tongs. And again, we're going to put the salt and peppered side down. And you want to hear that sizzle when you put the meat on other one and you don't want them to be too close together you want to give them their space okay now with the other side exposed we're going to salt and pepper them as well and then we are going to go ahead and put a lid on it okay um, not only does the lid prevent splatter which I hate but um, it just kind of really seals in that heat so now we are just going to let these go for about three minutes on side one, and then we're going to flip it. So I'll be back in a moment to show you what they look like when we flip them over. Okay, guys, so exactly three minutes have elapsed. We're going to very gently remove the very hot top, and carefully we are going to flip these babies over. And as you can see, hopefully you can hear me, there is a beautiful crust that forms. See? Right there, right around that edge. A nice crispy crust. And that is what we want. And this is um, flattering. So I'm going to go ahead and get the lid back on like that. And three minutes on this side, and they're going in the crock pot. Okay hey guys, so a couple more minutes, three more minutes have gone by on the other side. I removed the pan from the heat to stop the splattering. I have my crock pot already on high because I wanted to sort of preheat it. So I'm just going to take the top off. I'm going to get my pork. If I can get it right. Directly into the crock pot. And we want the meat touching the bottom of the pot when it first goes in, just shaking off any extra oil. So we want it in the crock pot like that. Okay, we're almost done. That's how easy this is. Then we are going to take the two sauces. I'm just going to get a can opener and then open these both off camera and I'll show you what it looks like when we dump it in. Okay guys, this is the hardest part. I'm totally kidding. Just take your sauce and literally dump it over, cover the meat, and then you're going to take the smaller can, dump that right on, and then I think what I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit of water in here, because see there's all that sauce left in there, so I'm just going to add some water off camera, shake it up, and get the rest out. Okay guys, so I added like, I don't know, third of a cup of water and just shook it up to get loose in all the extra sauce just because you want as much of it as you can get and just shake it right on top and then I'm just going to take a wooden spoon any wooden spoon will do nothing fancy and I'm again the meat is touching the bottom and you want it to stay that way so I'm just going to gently move the sauce to make sure that the meat is covered completely covered as best that I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just you want the meat to be as covered as it can be. That looks pretty perfect. Pretty good. Okay, and now we put the top on and we give it, I'm going to have to reset this. Um, I'm going to do six hours on high. And if high or six hours, either one of those two doesn't work for you, you can also do about eight hours on low. Okay, um, you're going to want to stir it regardless whether you do high or low. You're going to want to stir it about the first hour um, and then probably every hour if you can. If you're not home and you're just going to set it and forget it and you're going to work or you're going out for the day, I would recommend doing it on low um, just so it doesn't char or cook too fast. Um, since I'm going to be home, I'm doing high and I will just 
when I'm done filming, I'll just set this to six hours on high, and then I'll just stir it about every hour, hour and a half or so. And that is it. And then um, once it gets towards the end, the meat's going to be so tender, you can literally take a wooden spoon and like it'll, you know, just loosen the meat. It'll fall right off the bone. Um, I go ahead and discard the bones right before we eat it. Um, and then I sort of use my wooden spoon and break it all into chunks, the meat. And then I just boil up my pasta. That's all you got to do later when you're ready to eat is just boil up your pasta of your choice in some nice salted water. If you want a salad or something on the side or some bread, I'm probably just going to have rolls. And then again, um, just go ahead and break your meat off the bone. Or if your meat is boneless, you can break it into chunks. You can leave it whole. But either way, it's going to be really tender. Um, tomato sauce is very acidic, and it's going to go ahead and break up the meat naturally for you. So... This was recipe one of five in this crock pot series. This would be a wonderful meal to make all year round on a cold winter day or on a hot summer day because again, it cooks itself for you. It smells delicious. It, leftovers are great. It's better the next day. So again, hope you guys enjoyed part one of five and we'll see you in number two. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like plated up. The pasta is all boiled and when I scooped out the sauce, the meat literally fell off the bone fogging up a little bit. So Grady's just having the same thing except no pork. There may or may not be like little chunks, tiny little pieces in there, but he's not having any major pieces. Um, so luckily this is a meal he will eat um, with us. And then the pork just kind of, again, breaks into these juicy, delicious chunks, and it's just really flavorful. So I definitely recommend this one. I grew up eating this pretty much like twice a month. I'm just going to butter our roll, and dinner is served. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of five in this series. Okay, guys, so the part two of the Crock-Pot Summer Series video. Um, this is going to be recipe number two, and this is a summer corn chowder. Um, this is just a recipe that I sort of, I don't know, made up on my own based on something that I had many years ago. Um, and I make this, again, all year round. Um, I think corn, anything corn, whether it's chowder, corn muffins, corn on the cob, I just prefer, I really like corn in the summer. Um, so even though it is a chowder, obviously, again, you can make it all year, but I do like to make this in the summer. Um, pretty easy, um, as most crock pot recipes are. For this recipe, you're going to need some butter, some salt and pepper, which I just have my shakers here. You're going to need a can and a half of cream of mushroom soup. Obviously, they don't sell half cans, so I got two cans. You're going to need two cans of cream-style corn in the can. You're also going to need two cups of frozen corn. You're going to need a small to medium yellow or white cooking onion. You're going to need some shredded hash browns. Um, if you don't want to use the shredded hash browns, you can just shred up some potatoes yourself, like with a cheese grater. You're going to need some diced ham. If you're a vegetarian and you don't want to add ham, that's fine too. It's just another element that I like. I've also made this with crumbled up bacon, but I, I do like it with a ham. Um, and then lastly, you're going to need some whole milk, which I have in my refrigerator because it's like 100 degrees and I don't want to keep it out. But you will need whole milk. And then you're also going to need some fresh parsley. If you don't have or can't find for whatever reason parsley, um, then the dried parsley just like this is fine too. But I happened to be in the market today um, and I just stumbled upon it. So I figured why not get it. It's super cheap. Um, so yeah, this is everything you're going to need. Right now I have my crock pot preheating on high. And I'm just going to go ahead and get the things like this chopped up. Um, and then this out of the bag and measured out and kind of everything I'm going to get ready to go right into the crock pot Okay, just so you guys don't feel left out. You're not missing anything All I did was put the two cans of creamed corn with the three um, tablespoons of butter in the crock pot again That's preheated. I have my frozen corn that's going in now. So that's all I'm doing. You guys are not missing anything I'm just dumping everything into the crock pot and I will show you how it all looks before I stir Okay guys, so everything I showed you is in the crock pot except for the whole milk, the fresh parsley, and the salt and pepper. So now that I have the majority of it in, I figured I would film and show you guys. We're going to put three cups of whole milk and I have two cups here. Now for this particular recipe, you are going to want to use whole milk. Um, if you were to use like a skim milk or a 1% or something like that, um, it wouldn't quite be a chowder. It would be more watery. Um, so for this particular recipe, I would recommend, let me just measure this real quick. We want one cup. 
um, using whole milk because you're going to want that chowder consistency. So there is three cups in the crock pot. Okay, I'm going to do several shakes of black pepper and then less of a shake of salt because the ham does have salt. Now that everything's in except for the parsley, um, the reason I don't put the parsley in now is fresh parsley becomes bitter um, if it's cooked too long. Um, so if you do want to add the parsley now, like say this is a meal you're making, you know, in the morning and you're going out all day and you want to come home and have dinner ready, you're going to want to go ahead and use the dried parsley. Um, but I'm just going to add the parsley, my fresh parsley, chop it up and add it towards the very, very end. Um, just because I don't want it to get bitter on me. So now that I've just stirred it, because you, what you want is you want that cream of mushroom soup to really, really combine um, with everything. It actually smells really good already. Okay, so now I am going to cover it and forget about it. So I'm going to put the lid on. And I have it set for six hours on high. Um, I'm probably going to do... I'll leave the timer set the way it is, but I'm probably going to check it around five hours. So when there's an hour left, I will check it. Like I'll just physically take a spoonful and taste it. Um, because I know some crock pots vary. I have never made this recipe in my new crock pot, which is this crock pot, which isn't new, new, but it's new um, since I have made this recipe. My old crock pot was much older, like an actual, um, an older version. So that one cooked... Um, the recipe this recipe in six hours this one seems more powerful and hotter so I'm thinking this one might be five hours um, but again I will have to check um, you know once we get to that one hour left on here and let you guys know um, and don't fret because as I always do on my cooking videos I'm gonna have everything typed up down below for measurements for times so um, if you didn't quite catch how much of each thing to put in just don't worry because it'll be all down um, in the description box below so i'm going to let this do its thing and i will show you guys what it looks like later plated up okay guys so about three and a half hours have gone by and it's actually done because um this cooks this crock pot cooks a lot quicker than my old one so i don't want to get too close because it'll fog up but it's, I can definitely tell it's done by the way it feels when I stir it and just a taste of it. Um, so again, I'm going to type up everything down below and I'll put some different options for cooking times for both low heat and high heat as well. Um, because this is definitely done after just three and a half hours on high. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up some parsley and then plate this up and show you guys how it looks. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like. It's piping hot, so I can't get too close. And I just chopped up a bunch of the flat leaf parsley and put it on there. It smells and tastes delicious. And three and a half hours was not bad. Um, again, this was the first time making it in my new, this new crock pot. So now I know that um, in the new crock pot, it's a lot quicker, but if I were to put it on low, it would be longer. And again, I'll type everything up down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this summer corn chowder, part two of five, and just stay tuned for part three. Hey guys, Grady's mom here with part three of my summer crock pot series. I'm just going to be doing a crock pot chili. You could do this recipe um, on the stove top as well. It would obviously be a lot quicker um, and just as delicious. But the reason why I'm choosing to do it in the crock pot today is I just have a really busy day and I want to make a meal that I can just set it and forget it. And all I have to worry about is just maybe stirring it a couple times and then it's done waiting for me to eat it. So for this chili, I'm just going to use a pound of ground beef. Um, it's just my husband and my son and I. So, you know, if you have a bigger family, you can always double the recipe and then just use two of everything. So I'm just going to use a pound of ground beef. I have a can of dark red kidney beans. I have some white corn. I have a can of diced tomatoes. I have a packet of chili seasoning, although you can make your own chili seasoning with chili powder and cumin, and you can easily look up the recipe if you wanted to make your own chili seasoning. A very small yellow onion, and then later on when I'm ready to eat the chili this evening, it's morning right now, I'll just boil up some of these elbows because I personally like chili over pasta, 
Some people like chili plain and some people like chili with rice. It's really your preference. I just like it with the pasta. That's how my mom made it when we were growing up. I think she did it sort of to make it stretch further, but I, it just ended up sticking and I really like it. So all you'll need to do is I have to chop up my onion and brown up my ground beef till it's about, I don't know, 90% cooked. I'll drain all the fat out so there's no excess fat and then get all of this into the crock pot. So I'll show you guys how easy it is right now. Okay guys, so I have everything prepped. I have my ground beef that's about 90% cooked and I just drained all the fat out because you don't want any excess fat. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by getting the ground beef into the crock pot first. So I have my crock pot on low because it's gonna cook on low. And I'm gonna put the ground beef in first, like I said. So all the fat strained out. Next, I'm gonna put the beans in. I drain the beans. You wanna drain your kidney beans really well because they're gonna have that film. Next, we're gonna do the corn, the tomatoes. Again, if you're doubling, you're just gonna do double of everything that I'm doing. And you can also use ground turkey meat if you're not a fan of beef. The onion's going in. It's a small little onion that's just been diced up. I'm going to put the chili seasoning in on top. Now the chili packet seasoning calls for a cup of water. So I have that, but I don't think I'm going to add the whole cup right away. I'll probably add most of it. And then I just want to eyeball it first before I add the rest. So I added about three quarters. And I'm gonna grab a spoon and stir it up and kind of see the consistency if I need to add a little bit more water. And you can always add more down the road too. So you wanna get it really well combined since I won't be touching this for at least a couple hours because I have a lot of things to do today. So it's just gonna be nice that it's gonna cook itself. So it actually looks like I really do need a little bit more water. So I'm gonna trust the package and I'm just gonna add this little quarter cup of water I have left. Just cause again, since it's cooking for so long, you don't want it to dry out and char. So we're gonna give it a nice stir and it looks pretty well combined. I'm just gonna get everything off the side that I can and just try to get it even. And that looks pretty good for a start. So all we're gonna do now is put the lid on. A Couple hours will go by and I'll give it a stir. You know, stir it every couple hours. I have my timer set for eight hours on low. However, it's probably gonna take closer to six to seven hours. But at least I have it on for the full eight so I know, um, you know, sort of just to gauge the time frame. But again, it'll probably be done in six to seven hours and I will let you guys know at the end. And then like I said later, I just have to boil up my elbow noodles. I have to make some just cornbread out of a cornbread mix and dinner is done. So I'll be back later to show you guys how it all looks when it comes together. Okay guys, so the corn muffins are done. They just came out of the oven. Just gonna let them sit for a minute. And then the chili is done as well. Ended up taking about six hours on low. Get my spoon and it smells really good and looks really good. So I decided not to make pasta and we're just gonna have it just the way it is with some corn muffins and I'm just gonna top it with some cheese. So let me go ahead and get this plated up and give you guys a better look. So we have a nice big bowl of chili here. I just put some, um, this is my husband's, some of the uh, four state cheddar on top. I don't like cheese on my chili. So this is what my husband's looks like. Chili looks really good, it tastes delicious. And then we're gonna have some corn muffins on the side. I just put some butter, kind of made a slit and put some butter in there. And this is a really good summer chili or all year round football season. You just can't go wrong with chili. So I hope you guys enjoyed part three of the series and stay tuned for the next recipe. Hey guys, Grady's mom here with part five, um, the final part to my crock pot series. I'm doing a huge pulled pork and you didn't miss anything. I just took a five pound pork butt, which I got at Publix in my uh, butcher department. 
It's all tied up nice, and again, it's huge. It was the smallest cut they had available. Normally, I would only do about a two to three pound, but all they had was five. It's like 4.9. And I just put about a cup of water in the bottom of my crock pot. This is a six uh, quart crock pot, so it's a large crock pot. And I just put the cut of meat fat side down in the water, and then I just seasoned it with this Brooks Grill and Rub. Totally optional, you can just put it in plain, but this is just to give it a little extra flavor. I'm gonna let it go for about two hours on low, and then I'm gonna add this Campbell Slow Cooker sauce, um, which is literally just a pulled pork sauce. You just add the pork. So this calls to um, let it cook seven to eight hours. However, it is based off of a smaller cut of meat. So I'm gonna let this go again for two hours on low, and then after two hours, I'm gonna go ahead and add this sauce kind of right over top and let it go the rest of the seven to eight hours. And then that's it, we just set this and forget it. And then once I get ready to shred it all up, I will show you guys how easy it is. But it is going to smell real good here today. And I am just going to serve the pulled pork on these poppy seed crusty rolls. I'm just gonna slice them in half, kind of lengthwise like a sub, toast them up and butter them, and then put the pulled pork on here, maybe with some shredded cheese, melted cheese. And then I think I'm gonna make, um, alongside of this, either a sweet potato hash brown or a pierogi, some kind of potato, and then call it a day. And we're gonna have tons of the pork left over. So it may or may not be leftovers tomorrow night. If we're not in the mood for it tomorrow night, we'll eat it the night after. Or if I just feel like freezing the rest for a whole nother meal, that would be an option too. Because with almost five pounds, we are for sure gonna have at least a, a, you know, a huge meal left over. So we will kind of have to see how that plays out. But I'm super excited to eat this. I haven't made a pulled pork in about maybe a year and a half to two years. So it's the first time making it in a long time. So I will let you guys know how it looks. Um, in a couple hours when I add the sauce. Okay guys, so let's see. About two and a half hours have gone by and as you can see, we're making some progress. It smells so good. So I have my slow cooker sauce open and all I'm gonna do is just pour it right over the top because we still have a long way to go here. So I'm just gonna get every little bit out kind of squeeze it all out might need to add more later because again this packet only calls for a two to three pound and I am working with a close to a five pound one so have that in there let me just grab a wooden spoon and sort of just cover this nice piece of meat just so the sauce can kind of coat it and that's it. So, I'm just gonna let this keep going and I'll check back on it in a couple hours. I have to go out now and do some errands. So I'll give you guys a peek when I get home in a couple hours, but so far we're making some progress. Okay guys, so seven and a half hours have gone by and I just took off the string and the fat and then I just took a fork and shredded it all up. It's kinda dark over here. Um, and it's really good. Um, it did need a little bit more sauce, so I just added some more barbecue sauce because that packet, like I had told you earlier, only called for um, a couple pounds. So I'm going to get this plated up and show you guys how I'm going to serve it. Okay guys, dinner is done. I made some sweet potato fries. I just sliced up a sweet potato and then olive oil, uh, tossed it in olive oil and some seasoning. And then I toasted these poppy rolls and it, they are just over exploding with pulled pork and melted cheese and the rolls are nice and toasty so that was I think actually this trumps any of the other recipes for simplicity you just put the meat in put the sauce on and it just shreds apart with no effort so yeah super easy really yummy we have tons of leftovers um, probably gonna freeze some actually because we really have a lot so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and stay tuned for the final part Hey guys, Grady's mom here with part five, the final part to my crock pot series. Um, it's taken me a little over a week to get all of these uh, things compiled. So this is the last one and I'm really happy that I'm gonna be able to share these five recipes with you. The last recipe I wanted to share is a dessert and it is a pineapple upside down cake, which I know most people have had, um, just made the traditional way in the oven. 
However, you can make uh, this in the crock pot as well. So this is what I'm gonna be sharing today. You're going to need some brown sugar. You're gonna need a box of yellow cake mix. Any brand will do, um, but I find um, when I have made it, the few times I've made it, the Betty Crocker seems to be the best. It's really, really moist. So a yellow cake mix, you're gonna need a 20 ounce can of pineapple slices, um, which is a pretty standard size can, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to save the juice. Um, from the pineapple jar, uh, can. You're gonna need some maraschino cherries, which are just like the uh, dessert, really sweet cherries. You're gonna need three eggs, some butter, and then some vegetable or canola oil. I have canola oil. Um, you're gonna wanna stick with either vegetable or canola. Olive oil would not be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead first and start by preparing um, this cake mix batter to the directions, which is super easy, just water, oil, and eggs. So I'm just gonna get this into a bowl, mix it all up, and get this ready to go, and then I will show you guys how to assemble everything in the crock pot. Okay guys, so I have my cake batter ready to go. I just added the eggs, the oil, and the water, and mixed it up nice. Uh, you're also gonna need some cooking spray. I forgot to mention that in the beginning, um, just to spray the crock pot with, because you don't want the cake to stick. So what I'm working on now is I melted a quarter cup of butter, and I added a cup of brown sugar to that. And I am just mixing that to make sort of a glaze. And we're gonna go ahead first and start by pouring this into the bottom of the greased crock pot. And this here is going to create the sort of glue that binds the pineapple and cherry to the batter um, and sort of kind of makes it stick, if you will. Um, it, like I said, it's sort of the glue. So I'm just gonna keep on stirring this. I have, I'm gonna spray my crock pot and I will be back to show you guys how I assemble everything with the glaze and the pineapple and cherry. Okay guys, so all I did was pour that brown sugar and melted butter into the bottom and it covered the whole bottom. I have the entire crock pot sprayed really, really well with cooking spray. And I have my pineapple open and I drained the juice and saved that. And what I'm gonna do is just simply layer the bottom of this crock pot as best I can with getting the pineapples as close together as I can to fill all the spaces. Now remember, I'm doing all these videos with one hand, so, because one hand is filming and one hand is doing. So I'm doing the best I can to be nice and steady for you guys. It's been broken half. So I'm just trying to get them as close together as I can. Oops. I got one here, and then I'm probably going to have to do half and half in the center here. So, this one I'm just going to kind of break with my fingers. Put one piece here, and one piece kind of like that. So I think that's probably as good as it's going to get. So now I'm going to grab my cherries and just pop a cherry in between the um, pineapple ring. Okay guys, so as you can see, I have a cherry in all the whole parts of the pineapple and then I also popped a few in like some of the empty spaces uh, right here I gotta put one more in here I missed a spot so now um, I have my batter and just a side note too um, I used a cup of the rest this batter recipe called for a cup of water but instead of the cup of water I used a cup of pineapple juice um, from this can. I actually had more than a cup, so I used just a cup of water, I mean a cup of pineapple juice instead of the water. And I'm just going to go ahead now and pour this right on top of here. And that's it. And then we're going to put the lid on and let it cook for about two and a half hours. However, and just a notation, again I mentioned previously in this video, um, this is a new er crock pot, so I haven't made this recipe in this crock pot yet. I've made it only in my old one. So I think to be safe, I'm going to set it for two hours, check it with a toothpick, and if it still needs more time, set it for another half an hour. But my old crock pot, this recipe took two and a half hours. So now, like I said, I'm just going to pour the batter on top of here and then show you guys what it looks like before I set it and time it. Okay, guys, and that's it. So I just poured the batter on. Uh, it's distributed pretty evenly on its own. If it doesn't, then just kind of use a wooden spoon to move it around so it's an even layer. And that's it. I'm going to put my lid on and get my timer set on high. And I'm going to do two hours. Start. 
and then after two hours, like I said, I will check it with a toothpick to see if it's done. If not, I'll give it a little bit more time. And that is it. This is such a delicious dessert to bring to a party or just to honestly have. Um, it's going to be really yummy. I can't wait to eat it tonight um, and obviously have a lot left for the rest of the week. So just stay tuned to see what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, guys, so an hour and a half have gone by. I'm glad I checked the cake. Um, I did the old toothpick trick. I just put a toothpick in the middle and it came out clean and the edges are nice and golden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the ceramic insert uh, from the actual crock pot and let it cool or cool for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to transfer uh, the cake onto my pan. So I'm really excited and I, like I said I'm glad I checked it because I had the timer set for two hours and I had a feeling it would be quicker than that because this crock pot seems to cook a lot quicker. So just stay tuned for what it looks like when it's out of here. Hello gorgeous. So this is what it looks like guys after I just um, flipped the crock pot over um, onto this aluminum foiled tray and it looks really good um, just as I expected. I've made this a couple times like I had mentioned in my previous crock pot that broke um, and this only took again an hour and a half um, in a new crock pot um, so if you're gonna make this I would just definitely keep a very close eye on it because unfortunately with baking and cakes and stuff once it's ruined it's ruined as far as you know if you don't pay attention and you let it burn but it looks super good the edges have that um, it looks dark here it's not burned at all it's actually that brown sugar and butter that formed kind of a little bit of a kind of crust over here and it just looks really really good I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes before I dig in because it's a little bit steamy but it looks super delicious and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out this concludes the five-part series I really really hope you guys enjoyed a lot of work honestly went into the these videos um, I know from you guys and you know you guys don't always see everything that goes into it but believe me when I tell you a lot of work went into these the past eight days really really hope you guys enjoyed I did the best I could and thumbs up if you want to see more series like this whether it's crock pots or just meal planning or meals in general because I would be happy to do them for you if you guys like them have a great day guys and I will see you all very soon bye